Have you ever bought something you absolutely don't need but that is so useful that you cannot convince yourself you gotta have it? I for instance recently bought this mouse right here and yeah, I absolutely don't need it. Like I was very good with what I had, it was functional, aesthetic and so yeah, I really had no need to upgrade and yet I did. I bought this mouse and truth be told, I've been loving it so far. But why am I telling you this story? Well, because a very similar thing happened to me recently with a note-taking app. The short story is that a company called Scrintle sent me an email proposing a sponsored video, to which I said something along the lines of, yeah, why not, let's take a look at the app. Keep in mind, when they messaged me, I wasn't really looking for a new note-taking app, like I was perfectly happy with Apple Notes, and to be honest, I still am. However, as I kept learning more and more about the app, I started to develop this feeling of, okay, that is nice. Hmm, that is useful. Wow. Oh my God, wow. And slowly but surely I started convincing myself that I really wanted and needed this app. And well, weeks later, here we are, making a video about why I liked Squintel so much that I basically kept using it. So consider sticking around if you are on the lookout for a new note-taking app or if you are open to trying out a new one. Because as the famous philosopher Erling Haaland once said, yeah, why not? Okay, so I'm going to be perfectly honest with you because the first reason why I liked Crintle so much was not because of some fancy functionality or anything like that. It was just because I thought the app was really easy to use. You see, as much as I like apps like Notion or Trilio, I hate the fact that I almost have to take an entire masterclass before being able to use it. Now, to be honest, I don't know if Notion is actually hard or if I'm just dumb, but yeah, it took a while to master. And according to some Reddit post, Apparently, a lot of people are also struggling with the app. However, with Scrintel, the experience is totally intuitive from the get-go. In fact, let me show you. Okay, so right after you log into Scrintel, this is the interface you see. On the left side, you find all of the features regarding like organization. So for instance, here you have a search bar, here you have recent notes, start notes, and something Scrintel calls boards, which are basically like the different spaces where you can organize your cards. In the center, we have the canvas, which is where you actually visualize and work on your specific notes. And these use of buttons right here are basically tools that allow you to either navigate the canvas or create new items. Uh, for instance, to create a new note, I just use these buttons like so, uh, or I can just double click anywhere in the canvas and that creates a note. And that's clearly not all, but most of the app is actually like this, very clean, very minimal, and very easy to use. Now, the next thing I really liked about Scrintel was how they integrated a mix of three different functionalities into a single and seamless experience, which are the ability to take vertical notes, the ability to organize information visually, and the ability to interconnect ideas. Now, by itself, each one of those functionalities are very meh, right? And in fact, there are apps that do each one of those individual tasks better than Scrintle. And I'm sure there will be someone pointing that out in the comments. But again, the thing I really liked about this app was how seamlessly they were able to integrate these three functionalities into a frictionless experience. For instance, here I have what a vertical node typically looks like. And as you can see, you have all the basic functionality, right? You can dump information, images, videos, links, you can select and format text, you can type the slash icon and insert stuff like tweets, quotes, lines, all that good stuff, right? So that's nice, but then you're able to type the plus sign and just like that, in a matter of seconds, you're able to link a new note to this existing card. You can then use that new note to drop even more information or create more links. And those links can be either to new cards or to pre-existing cards, like I am showing right here. And then you can close all of these notes and start organizing them in several multiple ways, like in a conceptual map or a timeline or a mind map or even a table. Now, why is this useful? Well, because it opens up the possibility to all sorts of use cases. So for instance, let's say I'm studying the bacterial infections. To keep everything organized, I can use Scrintel to make sure that all of my notes are embedded into the general classification of bacteria, as you can see here. And the cool thing about doing it like this is that every time I open my board, I'm hit with 
like a reminder of the big picture, right? But the big framework behind all the nitty gritty details. And that is really useful to help me ground everything I'm studying and I'm about to study. And in this case, the big picture was represented like this, but as I just said, I could have also used a mind map or a conceptual map or even a table if that's what I fancy. Now, another really great way in which this can be used is by allowing you to rapidly deconstruct a main note into separate but interconnected cards. And this can actually come really, really in handy. For instance, have you ever been taking notes on something and the text starts throwing you random details about other topics? It's kind of frustrating, right? Especially when you're reading a paper that discusses, for instance, let's say an approach to a symptom. I used to hate those papers because those include like a couple of tiny comments for a lot of diseases. And taking notes on those topics always felt like like wrong for me because I always thought that that information, those couple of comments of every disease, belonged in separate notes for each one of those diseases. However, taking notes like that wasn't really effective or efficient in a note taking up like OneNote or Apple Notes because my main note would end up being disconnected and incomplete and all of my separate notes uh, would end up feeling like, again, incomplete and would just lose themselves over time. However, with screen tilt, this doesn't happen. So let's say, for example, that you're taking notes on the approach to dizziness, right? And the paper starts throwing tiny comments about a few different diseases. So instead of trying to fit all of that information into your main note, you can just type the plus sign and create a new note for each specific syndrome and then include all the relevant information from that syndrome over there. By doing things this way, you ensure that your main note is connected and has direct access to all of the relevant syndromes, but at the same time, you leave the information of those syndromes where it actually belongs. And even if you don't ever get to actually read in detail the whole syndrome, you will still have the card over there ready to go. So if on another instance, you find another small detail about that syndrome, you can again just type the plus sign and that will lead you straight to the note and you can complement your card little by little. Oh, and one thing that's good to know is that you can pull up old cards that you have created previously and include them in other boards and integrate them into new boards if that's what you like. So for instance, I originally created this card in the board of inboard errors of metabolism, as you can see here, but I realized that it can also belong here in this board of primary immunodeficiencies. So all I need to do to include it here is type the name of the card using the search bar, right? Then I press shift and then I just drag it into the canvas. And there you go. Now this card is present in both boards. And whenever I complement this card in one board, it shows the changes in the other one as well. And again, you may find some of this functionality in other apps and platforms, but honestly, I haven't found a single app that integrates all of this while still remaining clean, intuitive, and flexible. Because that's the other thing. You can be really flexible and change things up in a second, even if you've already created the whole system. As an example, look how easy it is to rearrange this mind map on the primary immunodeficiencies into a table. I literally put a timer to, for you to see how much it takes. Okay, so let's start. Okay, stop. So, 35 seconds. It literally took me, well, this one kept, it was missing, but okay. It took me almost 35 seconds for put this whole thing, this whole primary immunodeficiencies mind map into a table. That's how efficient this program really is. And on top of this, I can also select a bunch of notes in a batch and change their color or toggle their appearance and decide if I want them looking like this or like this or like this. Oh, and I almost forgot, they also have dark mode. If that's what you're into. I prefer much more the light mode, but you do you. Now, another thing I really like about the platform is that it allows you to do all of your multitasking straight from the app. And this honestly is a game changer for me because the apps I'm used to, like OneNote, don't really allow you to multitask. They only open one note at a time and that's it. And sure, you can always prop up a couple of windows and put them side by side, but that's not even close to what ScreenTel allows. As you can see here, I can open a card and then maybe another one. And then I can open this image in picture in picture so I can work. And then maybe this PDF file and let's put it over here. And as you can see, I could keep going. I could keep opening cards and PDFs and images and even tweets. I can do all sorts of stuff, uh, which is amazing, right? If you're working on a very complicated project or 
topic. And one reason why this is such a game changer, at least for me, is because you can access all of these features in a screen tell straight from the browser, right? Which means that if you have something like an old iPad that wouldn't typically allow you to do heavy multitasking, you could still carry out serious work by just using the browser version of screen tell and multitasking directly from there. But anyways, no app is perfect, right? And this is clearly no exception. There are a few things missing that I would love to have that I think are very important. And so I'm gonna tell you the list in case some of that stuff is also important to you. So number one, the option to create tables inside of cards. Now, to be clear, you can organize cards into tables, like I showed you, uh, but yeah, not actually create tables inside of cards. Number two, there's no to-do list functionality. That's kind of sad because I, I would really love to use this as a to-do list, like a productivity app. Uh, number three, there's no tool to insert drawings or sketches into the notes. And yes, you can do the typical strategy of first create the, the sketch or the drawing in Apple Notes or something along those lines, and then take a screenshot and copy paste it. That's like a sort of a bypass, uh, but yeah, it's not the same. And finally, and most importantly, you don't have the option to create personalized templates. And this one is really the one that bugged me the most because templates just make everything so much faster and easier, right? And sure, you can always bypass this problem too by just creating like model boards or model cards that you just copy paste. You have the basic template there, you just copy paste it uh, and yeah, do this process endlessly. But again, it's not the same. So yeah, those five things could use some improvement. Uh, however, I'm actually feeling hopeful because the team behind Screentel has actually implemented a strategy where where they listen to the feedback of their users and they try to improve on the suggestions. In fact, if you check out their public roadmap, you can see that some features have already been completed, others are in progress, others are planned, and others are in consideration. But anyways, if you like the sound of this and you want to give it a try, there are a couple of options for you. Number one, you can sign up for the early access plan, which has a few pros you have to consider. Number one, it will give you obviously instant access to the platform with all of its current features. That's like the whole point, right? Number two, you will have a saying in how the app is developed moving forward, which, which is what we already discussed. And number three, you will lock a discounted pricing by being an early access adapter. Now, if you opt for this choice, I suggest you take advantage of my code, which is Santiago20, to get an additional 20% of discount in the subscription. These will be valid for a couple of weeks after the release of this video. So take advantage of it. Alternatively, you can just join the waitlist and eventually you'll receive a one month free trial to test out the app. I'll leave a link in the description for both options in case you're interested. In the meantime, here you have another video of me where I talk crazy theories about how AI is going to replace us in the future. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.